right now on the Rob Dibble Show. Daily Pickle. Daily Pickle. Daily Pickle. It's a Daily Pickle. Yes, let's start with the Chicago White Sox. I played for them for a few months back in the day. Oh, but, you uh, just want to claim a few months now, huh? It was a few months. It was three months. Yeah, right. um, Let's get exact. We Brewers. have a 20-game 20 20 losing streak. <laughs> Two weeks ago, was, I played for a couple years over there. No, I know everybody. I wish I did. I love the White Sox. They were really good to me. Still are, but yeah. they're 50 games under 500 right now. Goodness. Uh And they are, are they 50 or are they 60? 27 and 87. Oh, yeah. 60. Okay. We're 60 games There's below. There's 60 yeah. games. That's 60 that's, games it's, below. It's, yeah. I, I, my, I can't believe I'm looking at this. Astronomical. Astronomical, including losing their last 20 in a row going back four games before the All-Star game. That is just futility. We're Absolute f- futility. Um, come out of the All-Star break, lose to the A's, lose to the Twins, lose to the Royals, lose to the Mariners. Lose four to the Rangers, lose three to the Royals, lose wow. three more to the Pirates, and uh, they are just not a good team. Mm, mm, not mm. a good team. So now they play the Oakland Athletics in Oakland. They're on uh, the tail end of this latest road trip. It's got to be miserable on that flight from Minnesota to Oakland. I don't know, though, because this is a a whole different era of baseball player. It's a different era of pro athlete. It is an era of not getting embarrassed by strikeouts. It is an era of, I don't really care, I'm paid. This whole thing coming together for the Chicago White Sox, I think, is a combo of bad management for their team, bad players that exist on their roster, and the overall era that we're in of not really giving a darn about losing 20 straight. I feel like that's the whole thing. It's like the caring matter. It does have me looking up the 1899 uh, Cleveland Spiders, though. That had some really good players on their team. They just couldn't figure it out. Now, they have the worst record, uh, 20 and 141, 131, 21, 141. We're playing 161, 1899, maybe even played. No, you were playing 154 back then. Was it 54? Yeah. I don't know. I just know that they had one of the worst teams in the in the worst seasons in the history of sports. 20 and 134. You are correct, sir. Um, but this team was just atrocious. Couldn't beat anybody. Your Reds beat them 14 straight. They never lost. Never lost to the Cleveland Spiders. Uh, but they had players, man. They had Kid Carsey. Who can forget? They had old Crazy Schmidt. His name was Crazy. Like his, crazy. his real name was Crazy? <laughs> Dude, we got to look this guy up. Crazy Schmidt. <laughs> Frederick wow. M. Crazy Schmidt. Real dude. Yes, he played for the Cleveland Spiders on that 1899 That's classic. Team. At the time, the 1910 United States Census, uh, Schmidt was living in Chicago with his wife, Mary. Oh, the three little Schmidts that they had. They had three little Schmitz running three around. Three little Schmitz. Dorothy, Carl, and Fred Jr. Uh, Schmidt was still listed as a baseball player as his profession, uh, but he died of a cerebral hemorrhage in his home in Forest Glen. Of Those Chicago. kids drove him crazy. They drove him crazy. Um, <laughs> so the Chicago White Sox are the worst hitting team in baseball right now. Yeah. They're uh, one. Um, What's the team average? One percent. They're hitting 217. The Mariners are hitting 218 combined. So they're awful in wow. hitting. Not the worst. This is what blows my mind. Wow. Not the worst pitching staff in baseball. That goes to the Colorado Rockies, the Hartford Yard Goats affiliate. They have a five and a half earn run average. They are the worst pitching staff in baseball at 30th, but they're 41 and 72. So as you talked about in the first hour, they have a little bit more luck and balls bouncing on their side than the White Sox. White Sox ERA is 487. Yeah. Uh, but they're 60 games under 500 at 27. And 87. So, listen, that is, it. you know, I don't care how arrogant and titled they may be. That sucks. And it sucks that you have to play in front of your team a bunch more the rest of the season. Um, but going to work every day, knowing that you don't have an opportunity to possibly win these games, that that's, that's an awful feeling. I've been on some bad teams. 
nothing is as bad as what I'm looking at right now. Well, they're taking on the Oakland A's. And the Oakland A's... They're is, not even that bad. But it's a, it's a weird mix of the Oakland A's. Like, the Oakland A's are a bunch of guys that really want to play good baseball and are not paid at all compared to the White Sox. Like, I'm guessing they're... Team salaries are close, but I would put the A's below them. But still, like the A's, when you watch them play, it looks like a bunch of AAA guys that are really trying to but make. They're it. only twenty-one games under five hundred. The A's are forty-six and 60, 67. Yeah. They're they're twenty-third in pitching in the major leagues, which isn't awful at four point three. They have some decent players. They traded away decent players, but at least you have a skipper that has these guys thinking. Listen, you're still in the major leagues. These games still matter. It's going on your resume on the back of your baseball card. So you gotta you gotta go out there and you gotta bust it. And right now the White Sox, like you said, they they don't have a hunger. They don't have fight left in them at, at end of games. And it's just it's it's incredibly sad to even that Garrett Crochet really irritated me when he said, uh, if I don't get an extension, I won't play in the postseason. Who says that? I don't care what level you're playing at, little league, major league. No one says they won't play in, in playoff time if I don't get something. And that that's the modern-day player in a nutshell right there, and that's why the White Sox are awful. Have you noticed the run differential on the White Sox? Look at that number, negative 247. Yep. Again, they, they're not a good hitting team, and they're a terrible pitching team, so you're going to have that kind of differential. But they're also a bad fielding team. They're one of the worst fielding teams in baseball. So when you're when you've got the three worst things on your side – uh, obviously, they need uh, some people to lose their jobs. So right now, they have 69 errors. The only other teams, and obviously, your team is one of the worst fielding teams. Red Sox are worst with 84 errors in 110 games. Yeah, Cubs are Marlins, Reds, Mets, 71. White Sox, 69 errors in 114 games. So when you are one of the worst fielding teams, hitting teams, pitching teams, enjoy the suck. Mm, and embrace, embrace the, the suck, suck White you guys Sox. Stink. If you want to get better, you need to embrace it and you need to fix it. You can't. I mean, you're going to lose 100 games. And let's, listen, the, the only way I can look at this is the Royals last year lost 106 games, turned it around in one season. So even when you lose 100 games like the Royals did last year, you can still, and now they've opened up a two-and-a-half game lead over the Red Sox in the wild card because the uh, the Red Sox continue uh, to not play great games. They did over the weekend, but they've got to get hot if they want to get into the wild card. Guy who was hot over the weekend for the Red Sox was Abreu. His grandmother had just passed, and then he finishes up the day with two home runs under his belt. That's awesome. Whenever that happens, yes. you got to think that there is some extra juice in that bat, in that ball, in that swing. So cool for him. He's become one of my favorite Red Sox, man. Just love the way this guy plays with outfield, like plays it with no regard for his body whatsoever in that crazy corner over there in Fenway. And he's a great bat, man. And just this story alone is one of the better ones that have come. Well, bad that has a great ending to it. Um, but for the guy to do that kind of performance after the passing of his grandma, tip of the cap, man, to Abreu. Listen, some of the injuries and, and getting rid of Verdugo helped this dude, gives him a job and opening. He's got 262 at bats. You don't know what somebody can do until they get 600 at bats. And in that 262, 12 homers, driven in 42, hit 275, playing some really good outfield, that keeps you in the lineup. That's the kind of stuff that keeps you in the lineup. So I, I, the one thing I love about this guy, and it's not just because he lost his grandmother and he, he, uh, he, he played with a lot of emotion. He does play with a lot of emotion. Yeah. He brings right. emotion. Duran brings emotion. O'Neal brings emotion. So the guys that are in the lineup – are not boring guys. They're not really serene. They're they're emotional, and that shows. Um, they've had some some hiccups. Like I said, a uh, lot of errors that they've made on the season. Eighty four is a lot of errors. That's a lot of extra outs that makes your pitchers work extra. Throw ten pitches more, fifteen pitches more. But the the pitching staff has responded. And you've put some guys in the All Star game. Now you just have to finish the job, and that's not going to be easy. Listen. Baltimore Orioles are tough, even with their pitching injuries. Yankees are now getting healthier. Got Jazz Chisholm, a lot, lot more speed. Um, got Danny Jansen, better catcher, guy that's going to you know help them defensively, but off, off, also offensively. So uh, a lot of the things that the Yankees did to make themselves better, they addressed. The Red Sox, they addressed some things. So you know when, when you look at what some of these teams have done, 
and uh, what the Red Sox and the Yankees have done to address some of their their faults. I think they've set themselves up for the postseason because regular season, yeah, they look good. Um, but now for the postseason, um, when when you address some of these things, it makes you look that much better. Huge midweek series for all of our teams in our area. Red Sox first and foremost. They're taking on the Royals. This is the line of sixth place to seventh place. In the playoffs, out the playoffs. Boston Red Sox right now in the wild card standings are two and a half out of the playoffs the Kansas City Royals are the team everyone is chasing. So huge series for the Red Sox to try to close that gap against Kansas City. Uh, the Mets, another come on Mets, should win series. Said that against the Angels. Now I'm saying against the Cardinals. Like the Cardinals right there. Cardinals are a lot better, I think, in the last I don't know a month. And they're pushing the Mets to push for that wild card spot. Right now, Mets are one and a half games away from the wild card. The Cardinals are three games away from the wild card. Yankees, every game for the Yankees is very important. Not because they are the New York Yankees, because they're in a dead heat with the Baltimore Orioles right now trying to win that division. Yankees should win series. Now, I said this for the Mets, mean it more for the Yankees, because the Yankees, I think, are a better baseball team, and they're taking on the Angels, just like the Mets did this past weekend, where they dropped two out of three. Yankees should win this series, even if they don't win the division way up on the wild card. They're four games on top of Kansas City right now um, for that fourth spot, but some big series here in the final, uh, or in the midweek for the final couple of months. Yeah, Yankees have some easy games coming up, and they're not easy at all because they're in the major leagues, but the Angels for three, then they play the Rangers, then they come back and they're, they go to Chicago to play the White Sox. So you should win those series. And I keep saying Jansen is on the Yankees. He's on the Red Sox. I don't. I, I keep forgetting Well, that. you were talking Red Sox, right. and then you morphed um, into Yankees. But he's got a broken finger, broken wrist, whatever. He's got, he's coming off the uh, IL when yeah. he comes off. Um, but but again, when you're when you're trying to get better, you have to you have to address some of the things that that were your uh, weaknesses. And they and listen, I like Paxton. I like Paxton when he was a Yankee. I like Paxton uh, now that he's a Red Sox. I mean, you have to you have to have the things in place to when you get to the postseason, stay in the postseason. And health is the biggest thing right now. And so some of these teams, um, I like the fact that Stanton came back right now. They needed that guy in the lineup. Uh, Chisholm, uh, he, he, again, gives you speed. He can play different positions, um, and, and it pushes people. And, and when Dominguez comes off of that, that, uh, IL in the minor leagues and he's a hundred percent and he gets healthy enough, uh, to, to play in the major leagues. I mean, those are things that put pressure on you, not just for this year, but for next year as well. You know, I've said this about Glaber Torres. It, it goes back to Gary Sanchez. You know, you held on to some of these guys. You covet some guys too long. I, I think that Torres has finally w- um, uh, out, worn out his welcome in a New York Yankee uniform. And that's just because attitude doesn't win you ball games. Okay? A- attitude is something that, again, it has no place. And all of those championship years when Joe Torre was the manager, he didn't allow attitude to get in the way of the bottom line. You had a lot of guys that didn't play great during the regular season, but when it came to postseason, that's the job. Winning a championship was the job. So whether it was Louis Soho, whether it was uh, your Brocious at third base, any of those guys, they could hit 220 in the regular season, they'd hit 300, 350, 400 in the postseason because that's when it matters. You know, but for these guys, I, I don't know. They just go through the motions sometimes thinking, you know, everybody's looking at me, man. The spotlight's bright on me. And this isn't a gender thing. This isn't a race thing. or whatever. I heard people online saying, well, yeah, everybody always gets on the Latino players on the Yankees. Get the hell out of here with that crap. When you put on a Yankee uniform, it, it doesn't matter what color you are. you got to go out there and play well for the pinstripes only. It doesn't matter. We're hard on everybody. You know, but when I start hearing people say crap like that, that's insane. Anybody who dogs it, anybody who doesn't run out a, a ball off the wall, you should be met at this top step by every veteran player. It doesn't matter if you're Aaron Judge or if you're Garrett Cole or it doesn't matter what color your skin is. You're a Yankee. When I was a red, it didn't matter what color Eric Davis was or Paul O'Neill. If I effed up, 
I'm going to hear about it because that's what your teammates do. They police bad attitude. You know what the Yankees did? Nothing. Yep. They did nothing. I don't care if Aaron Boone. Aaron Boone benched the dude and then went on to talk about what a great guy he is and then went on for five minutes about this and that and this and that so he didn't hurt his feelings. I'm here to hurt your feelings. You're a major leaguer. You're getting big money to play this game. It's not about, you know, what what your, your religion is or what color your skin is. Dude, you're a baseball player. We judge you on how you play baseball. And if you don't want to run that crap out, go play on another team. But that's not the Yankee. Wait, listen. He went after – Aaron Judge went after Stroman. Stroman aired out Glaber Torres for yep. dogging it on a play in the field. Yep. And you know what? All of a sudden now he dogs it when he's not running out a ball that he thinks is a home run. You, dude, you you aren't good enough to not hustle on every play. And so for me, when I see that and I see more of it than I've ever seen, that is because these guys don't police each other. Because I don't want to get yelled at by uh, you know someone. If I get in your face, someone else is going to get in my face because I offended you. No, dude, we're trying to win a championship. That's your job. I think a big difference is Soto in that dynamic. I think Soto's just demeanor in being around. But the you're place. only renting that guy until that guy's making big judge money. But that guy wants to make big right. judge money, and that guy wants to be in the playoffs. And I'm sure there's incentives for it. So that guy ain't going to take your crap while we're trying to get there in the next couple of months. I just think that guy holds the standard and everyone else is falling. So I I do think Judge as captain. You, you know who the Yankees need? A guy like Lindor. Lindor is a guy that gets in, in your face. Yeah. He's the type of – listen, he reminds me of Joey Cora. And these these are the guys that – and I played with guys like this. Like, like I'm talking about an Eric Davis. Tom Browning was this way. Ron Oster was this way. Dave Parker was this way. My God, Dave Parker would walk in the locker room and be like, hey, everybody jump on my back. I'm going to carry you guys today. Literally said that, and that's the kind of man he was. So you know, when when I'm when I'm looking for a leader, I, it it can come from any corner of the locker room, any corner of the locker room. But you need that guy to speak up, or if he's not a big talker and he doesn't want to do it in the dugout, you go and you talk to this guy like a lot of my teammates would after the game. I could be in the training room, I could be by my locker. They'd sit down and they'd whisper. They'd be like, "Hey, that was effed up. What you just did." And you can't do it again. Now, Chris Sabo threw a chair over my head. That was a little bit different. That, that was kind his of way. That, that was, was Chris's way. way of getting the message across. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you have a, your number one job is to the name on the front, not the name on the back. And number two is to the fans. You always show the fans respect by how you play. Yeah. And you run every ball out. You run every out out. And this I say it to my 15U team, and I know some of them are listening. I don't. There's always someone watching you. There's always now, if you're in the high school level, a college scout could be the umpire, could be just a fan at the game, could be a parent or a relative of one of the kids you're playing, and he sees you run halfway. This, this just happened to us in a game. Guy, he was mouthing off the whole time, and even though his team beat us, it, it was a lasting impression on everybody in our locker room. The kid ran halfway to first base and stopped when he knew he was out. And every guy said, you see that coach? You see that coach? So at least I, I'm getting it across to them to understand somebody could be watching you at all times. So just think about that. So that was a big story about Glaber Torres, but it was more so um, because he got taken out of the game. My problem is that's not, the, that's not what you should be upset about. You should be upset as your teammate that he made everybody in that lock, that dugout look bad by not being on second base. Before we move on to Kurt's bottom five things to ask a coach during halftime segment, uh, Phillies Dodgers are this weekend that or this week. That's a huge series. Phillies have not really been playing good. Phillies have been kind of Dude, where the Yankees terrible. were when the Phillies beat or yeah. once the Yankees beat the Since Phillies. Since the break. Uh, the Dodgers, good news on this front. Freddie Freeman's son has oh, returned home from Maximus. the hospital. Maximus, God bless him. So yep. That's good news. But that will be a good uh, series to watch. Starts tonight. It's one of the final games of the of the night tonight. Two possible playoff contenders uh, going at it. All right, so when we come down, uh, come back, we'll do countdown to kickoff. Oh, yeah. And five things you should never ask a coach going into the locker room or coming out of the <laughs> locker room. We'll be right back. 91 Southbound, still with the slow. 